today I want to show you how to take this Celestron 11 inch edge HD telescope that has a field of view of an f10 ratio down to an f2 so taking a very tight view that an f10 gives you which is great for planetary observation or distant galaxies but for nebula and wider field of view you need to have a lower f ratio and an f2 doesn't take it out to here or here it takes it out to here plus it makes the speed much faster a lot more light coming on in and it just makes a wonderful time for astrophotography f10 to f2 welcome to heavenly backyard astronomy Well, the first thing you got to do, obviously, is we got to take off the lens cap. Now, unlike the um, other ways of, of using the telescope, usually you look in the back of the telescope and, and for the eyepiece as the light comes into the collector plate, bounces off the mirror, bounces off the reflector, then back through the tube into the eyepiece or into the camera. Uh, but today, we're going to change that configuration and make this a hyperstar. Uh, configuration. What I'm going to do is I'm taking this Hyperstar HD lens with an Altair 183C hypercam and that's attached to the system and I'm going to put it on the Celestron. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. First of all we got to take off this, the, uh, the secondary mirror. It comes off relatively easy this unscrews here. Be careful not to touch the collector plate. Okay. And then next, you take your Hyperstar reducer lens and you unscrew this portion right here. Why am I doing that now? I'll tell you. This becomes a holder for this. So I'm going to set the hyperlens down, carefully take out the secondary. There it is. It's got a little notch on there, and there's a little notch on here. Just line them up. It fits in real nice. And then you take the, uh, the washer or the clamp that came on with the uh, with, off the telescope, and you screw it onto this to store your secondary mirror so it doesn't get damaged or uh, dirty. It's, you don't want it exposed to the air or to the elements. Next, you take the hyper lens and you put it in its place. It's a little difficult sometimes to get in. You gotta find the screw. Sometimes I get it right away. Sometimes it takes me a while. And this one's, t there I got it, okay. When I thought I didn't have it, I had it. You just screw it in. It's going to take several turns. There. You don't want to make it too tight, just right there at the end. Now, next thing we do is connect the camera and in this case, I have a USB 3 cable. Now this is not a thermoelectric cooled camera. That's on my list. Uh, Santa Claus, are you listening? Uh, but this is my, um, uh, uh, it's a fan cooled um, camera that's not thermally electric cooled or TEC. So it only has the one cord and that's for the uh, USB. And it just goes in like this. Now, I'm almost done. But I like to do something uh, a little bit more. I have a, a, a dew shield that I put over here, which has uh, uh, several uh, properties. Obviously, it helps protect the dew. I also have a dew strap around the camera and, uh, our, and the, the lens itself, a heating strip that helps uh, prevent dew formation on the lens. But the dew shield helps, also blocks stray lights. I'm in a heavily light polluted area. Not as bad as some of the folks I've been seeing on the uh, Facebook and YouTube, 
uh, but uh, I'm about a Bortle 6.5 here. I can barely see the Milky Way uh, in the uh, late spring and early summer and midsummer nights uh, here in my backyard. But uh, let me get the dew shield. Now this is my dew shield and I cut some notches in here to uh, fit with the um, the uh, plates on the telescope itself so it'll slide in uh, and make a nice fit. Now also see this cord here it's going to pull on this cord. I'm going to uh, pull it this way. So here we go. Put the cord over here. And get on the other side. Go right over the heating strip. There. Now, it keeps the cord from dangling and that helps with the, uh, uh, you don't want the cord to be moving around so it's always in one spot so that it can be filtered out. You don't see the cord actually uh, in the image itself. If you put the image way out of focus you can see the cord. What, why do you want to do that? But once it's in focus you don't see the cord at all. And all this light coming on in uh, goes right back into the camera. So now I'm ready to start uh, shooting uh, hypercam uh, throughout the night. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, I still have about two hours, almost three hours before it gets really dark enough. I'm going to try what I did last night. Last night I shot uh, with this configuration M1, M81 and M82. I had a lot of dust bunnies on my pictures. You'll, I'm going to show you those. Well, here they are. You see the dust bunnies? Uh, I didn't clean the lenses off. Uh, I got lazy, I guess. It's important to keep your light train clean. So earlier this afternoon, I cleaned the lenses off the uh, Hypercam. I cleaned the lens off the Hyperstar and uh, then put it all back together and sealed it so that the dust and all that is hopefully gone. It's hard to take um, flats with this system because you can't cover it up. And if you do, uh, there's, you know, the camera gives off a flashing red light showing that it's operational and that reflects back into here so it's very difficult to take flats uh, with a white t-shirt type method. However, uh, when twilight comes I'm going to point it up to the north and that sky should be nice soft blue and I'm going to try to take some flats that way. And then taking, um, taking my, my darks and my bias I just simply unscrew the camera from the hyperlens and then I, I cap it just set it down over here and then uh, take my, my darks and my bias uh, from there. Uh, you may ask, where's your computer? Where is everything? Well, it's all down this cord. It goes into here and then this goes underground and then up into my house, into my desktop computer up in my office uh, where I can control the telescope. I have everything controllable. I got the focus. I can control that. Uh, the Celestron uh, PWI is amazing. I love it and operate the scope through that. And, uh, and then the, uh, the guide scope, where is it, over here? There, uh, it's over there, I can see it. Uh, I'm on the other side of the scope. It's over there and uh, it's all controlled from inside the house. So I have a USB extender and it's in here. And I'll show it to you. The USB extender. All right, I'm gonna move the camera. There, you can see the USB extender. This will give me four USB outputs right there. And then they connect to this blue wire here. And this blue wire is a Cat6 cable. And it goes underground alongside the patio. And then underneath my daylilies there. And it goes up this post. You can see the little conduit right there. Going up the post. Up, 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 up. And in across the facing of the balcony, and then around the balcony, and up into my computer room over there. And that's where the computer uh, is ingesting all the information. All right, first of all, I want to show you the difference between a dirty lens and then the lens that was cleaned. Then the use of flats. Let's take a look. This picture here that you're looking at, that is from last night. I didn't clean the lens and I did not use flat. And you can see all kinds of noise and dust bunnies on that image. Let's um, look at uh, another one. Uh, this one was 
I took today, I cleaned the lens and you can see a dramatic difference already uh, from a clean lens. There. You can see by cleaning the lens there was a big difference. I'm still not happy. I still see dust bunnies in there and I still the, that dark spot in the middle still annoys me. Uh, so let's take a look at what happens when I take flats with the same image using flats. Uh, there you are, right there. And there you have it. You tell me. Look at the difference of that. Amazing. The flats do work. Now I haven't used the darks or bias yet. I'll do those later on tonight. Uh, this is only 20 minutes of uh, three hour exposure that I'm planning to do on M81 at the top there and M82 at the bottom. But again, the difference between a dirty lens and a clean lens and then a lens using flats.